So with Ordeal Call, Paper Moon starting tomorrow. Uh, yeah, Jebate by Lasagna. Uh, we don't have much time in between now and when Lost Belt 6 comes out. So I'm actually going to start the videos uh, kind of out of order. Today and tomorrow is going to be Lost Belt 6 and then Monday and Tuesday is going to be Paper Moon. Uh, so I'm not going to have Burma and uh, I'm Duro. I'm, I would pronounce his name horrendously because I have no idea who the guy even is. Uh, yeah, so we're talking about Melison today. Uh, spoiler alert. She is not a character. If you are not a whale, if you are not an established account, Melison will perform so drastically different than you, your expectations based on what everyone else has said. Yes, her damage is absolutely ridiculous. Absolutely. Like whether you're going black rail or not, her damage still outshines her competition by such a large fucking margin. It's not even funny. Like literally her damage is double other units using black rail in their own class like what literal pretty much double actually double if you're using the same exact setup like it's a giant elephant in the room but there's a big caveat to it you need bitch you need Oberon. You need all, pretty much all of their skills maxed out. You need Melison's skills maxed out. She is an extremely cost. I don't want to say cost inefficient, but heavy cost unit. You need to be like prepped to be able to use her. Otherwise, she does not do her job. Design wise, I think she's very like cool. Uh, she's not a child. You can see here, she does not have the child servant trait. So despite what a lot of people would say, she is not like an Ilya. She's not. Oh, uh, it's, it's like some of the tastes of like this are, are just like so weird. Twitter is such a Twitter is such a place. It is a place that exists. So Tamlin Lancelot, very night Lancelot. Base attack higher than average, higher than the midpoint at 12.1 K. This is fine. It works really well for her. Don't get me wrong. Would it like, does she need this much? No, like it could have been like 11. Uh, 0.6 and it still would have he still would be performing the exact same there would be no difference uh like if, if they just wanted to go balls to the wall power creep they should have made this 12.7 just to like just to nail the coffin in that like yeah we made we overtuned this servant uh so let's just let's just be blatant about it that we overtuned her hp it's it's good but you don't really care uh, Melison as a Buster Farmer is three turns and everything is going to be blown up. It's not three turns and then, oh well, like quick farming, it's three turns and everything is dead. Uh, Starweight Sargent, like actual standard Lancer, <laughs> Lancer numbers, like this is the most average thing in her entire kit. That's fucking saying something. Her av like her most average thing is star gen. MP charge 0.65%. Good if you keep her on arts. Doesn't really matter on Buster, but it's nice that the number is high. Lots of traits. Round table night at stage one or costume one. Deck, good quick card, but we don't care too much. Like it's nice that it's good, but as you can see, like she doesn't have the riding passive, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, it's four hits though, and she's a lancer, so you'll gen some stars and like a mighty chain. 
but uh, it's not something you really care about. Double arts, double buster. It's good because she switches between arts and buster. So at any point, you're always going to be have the potential to do a chain of that type. So uh, buster, brave chain, arts, brave chain. You can do both of them no matter what. Changing the uh, MP type does not affect the deck. By the extra attack, she is looking good upstairs. There's no no glaring problems whatsoever. I'm also going to take the Cadroth approach uh, and say she does not need a lot of this stuff. This is just like they gave it to her because of lore. And like, that's it. Uh, in year one FGO, that was a big problem uh, because it me meant a lot of servants just didn't get shit. Uh, for Melison, it's a problem because she really did not need this. Like, 40% attack, 30% battery. That by itself, uh, let me hold up. Oh. Oh. So this CL kind of like, can kind of just shit on a Buki. Because hers is only three times three turns and with a 50 percent uh she's 40 percent for three turns flat with a 30 percent battery and then also tk max hp along with 500 damage cut um yeah how how do you how do you explain that like ibuki is like hyped up lore wise and then they, like her her skill is just like nowhere near as like strong as this like even if this is a 50 percent and this is 30 functionally functionally they are the same if you have a an append like a mana loading append melison doesn't really need extra attack it's nice if she has it but she doesn't need it so like outside of longer drawn out fights yes abuki's is like will be more helpful but longer cooldown and then this is functionally a 50 percent and for Melison, the fight's not even going to last long enough for it to matter. At, at least this is on on a six turn. If this was a five turn, like I would like actually be up in arms. Uh, basically, the TLDR, they're saying like making this instead of three times, making it flat is worth knocking the battery down by 20%, but also like giving the second shit. I don't know if that adds up right. Like this is this to me is saying like they need to buff Abuki's skill and make this permanent. I would prefer the MP to be buffed first, but I mean this would functionally make her like perform better in longer drawn out fights. All right, enough ab about Abuki. Uh, yeah. So also they're both dragons too. Uh, th that's another reason I brought up Abuki because they're both supposed to be dragons, and like this, I think is like stronger than Abuki's pass. No, 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 I think Abuki's passive is like flat 200, like all the time. But like, I see the inspiration for this skill. Second skill, uh, this is Lancelot's. This is Eternal Arms Mastery. Uh, with more stuff. This is entire, basically Lancelot Saber's entire kit. Like, I, I, I'm not even joking about that. This is literally like two of his skills, if not more. Like, 5,000% star weight. Uh, on a land, on a saber, that is like so much star weight. It's not even funny. Uh, on a lancer, it's not nearly as strong because natural star weight, star, uh, weight is higher on sabers than lancers, but it's still like, most other servants are not getting these stars. This is Berserker star weight on a night class. 10 stars per turn, 10 star bomb on a five turn cooldown. Sure. No, like I don't, I don't really see a problem with this skill. Like the, the, they're not as strong as Lancelot's effects besides this one. Uh, and yeah, like does Saber Lancelot, did he use a skill buff? Yeah. But like, are we, are is that really the issue right now? No. Uh, he's fine how he is right now. This, cool that she has it. Not not the most broken part about her get. 
Uh, it's not the most average, but it's not the most broken. This is the most broken part. He did not need 100% battery. Flat out, she does not need one. Functionally, you just need 50, which is what you start with. You don't need to double stack the skill either. Uh, it just makes her damage way higher if you get the cooldown up to six or five. If you get it to six, you don't need a mana loading a pen at all. Uh, yeah, so she changes her MP type. She she will get a battery and change her MP type from single target arts to AOE buster. You are able to go zero to 100 with her on turn one, and you don't even need this skill anywhere near maxed out. If you have this skill maxed out, 30% battery. If you have mana loading, 20% battery, you have 100 on the first turn. You're, the only reason you level this skill is really for this. 30 turns MP damage. Reducing the cooldown so that she works with a bitch functionally. In both cases, you get an invo for a turn. You really don't care about that. Like, being honest. You really don't. She didn't need 100% battery, but they can't walk it back. If it was 50, she functionally would be the same. She would just require even more investment. This, this like this video isn't like slander saying like a buki or not a buki. Uh, Melison is like so brokenly overpowered. It's not even funny. Blah 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 blah. It is again. I need to preface this. She is only broken in a very, very, very specific setup where Oberon is literally like double more than doubling her damage. What it would be if you use so how I use Melison, I don't even use Black Rail. I just use like Detective Phones with 2000 extra attack and she stole 0 to 100 to everything. Uh, yes, I am using Oberon. Uh, but the only MP damage she gets is this skill and Oberon's. So she's double, she, she's still getting 120% MP damage on that third turn. Like at that, at that point, like it just stops mattering. Like she just gets so many raw steroids that like you really don't. If you're missing stuff in other places, it, it's not going to matter. All of her skills are great. It's just how it is. Uh, passive skills, 17.5% debuff resistance, 9% arts buff. And skills, if you have to pick anything, pick mana loading. If you get one copy, get mana loading. It completely opens up your team to being able to do 90 plus, uh, 90 plus nodes with Melison, like literally carrying by herself, not with supports. I'm t I'm literally talking about Melson soloing the the node by herself. If you get a 50% uh, CE, say for a lotto, uh, she can MP with her first skill, like for single target, and then switch to AOE Buster and just nuke whoever she's fighting. Is that going to be as high damage as her normal farming? Absolutely not. But her damage is not, it's not going to be so low that she doesn't kill. Like, we'll, we'll see it in a second, but getting mana loading and leveling this are your number one priorities if you want her to function anywhere near as, as much as people hype her up to be. These are requirements. But getting this up to level six isn't that hard. I'm skipping the MP and we're just gonna look at it right now. It is this, we need 36 of these just to get it to six. After that, it's more manageable, but going from going from eight to nine is the struggle if you are not prepped. So again, very, cost, very costly servant to build. You need to farm a lot for her to perform extremely well. It is literally going to take people months like probably legit months before their melisons are doing anywhere near what the jp melisons do like regardless if if you have the pure prisms you need to literally farm 216 of these 
to get her fully up and running. Well, no, no, no. Sorry, not 216, 144. The reason being is you don't really need second skill leveled for her to do her job. It's just nice if all the cooldowns are low. But if it's on a six turn, who fucking cares? Both of these are on six turns, so you're just going to pop them at the same time again. It's not going to matter. Oh, yeah, this is on a five turn, so you're still popping this. You'll be popping these two together. Like it, it, it's it's two parts with Melison. It's like what she does and like the cooldowns for it. It's not just it's not just what she can do or what her kid says she can do. So here is the single target arts version. Damage to one enemy increases their damage taken by a thousand for five turns. Literally the Lancelot uh thing. It does it does jack shit. Gain ten stars. Increases MP generation for three turns. Activates first twenty percent. Uh, her MP as arts does not do the most damage, but remember who her supports would be if you did this. Uh, Tomomo, Castoria, uh, you probably throw Lady Avalon in because she does have like some crit synergy, like not a whole lot. She doesn't have crit damage, but supports can give it to her. Uh, and then she's like basically looping her, like she'll basically get to a point where she's looping her MP off her MP alone and then if you throw in tomomo you're getting cooldown reduction you're spamming this like she basically will always have all the stars at any given time at all times uh damage cut max hp like all of this shit like even without having a third skill i think that kit alone like two skills of these numbers uh single target lancers uh yeah just single targets like, is she gonna blow Shisho out of the water? No. Well, actually, that depends. If you're talking like one-shot nukes, no, she there she's not coming anywhere close to Shisho when Shisho hits her her niches. Cause Shisho hits so goddamn hard, it's actually fucking stupid. But that's not where Melison's strength lies. She is the only one up here this high that is actual three turns. And she's the only one that is three turns arts. Li Xuin is still one turn. Regardless, like if you need a single target Lancer, Melison actually will do the job fairly well. If like, especially like embodying arts, single target DPS, she embodies it. Loop the MP as much as possible. Spam the skills as much as possible for all your supports. Spam MPs nonstop. That is Melison as an Arts Lancer's entire gameplay. And you can see here, the, wh who is her competition? It's Enkidu and Shisho, and they are Enkidu is known as a like solo tank, uh, tactical nuke. Shisho is known as a divine tactical nuke. Uh, I tested this on stream. Uh, Without Black Rail, Double Scotty, uh, and with 2K attack from Detective Foams. Foams? God, I can't English this morning. Uh, she was doing 953,000 damage on NA without Black Rail, without an offensive Mystic Code 2. Melison, is she going to do anywhere near that damage? No. But she, that is one turn with Shisho, and then she struggles to get back. Melison's gonna MP, and then she's gonna get like 40% back. Then you finish the Arch Chain, and then you have all the supports to give her even more gauge. You could still run her with a Black Rail and like keep her single target Lancer, and she would like be doing so good damage, you don't even care if she has one card or two skills. Those two skills are literally better than half of these servants' kits. Entire like their entire skills. Like let's let's bring up Lee Shu in. So, like specifically, because he is single target arts. Crit damage for one turn. She doesn't have that. In ignores invul. Uh no, she does not have invul pierce on this on that MP. That is true. But that is dodge. Dodge for one turn. Star weight. Cool. Um, she shits on this. Like she literally takes a giant shit on this because she has this times 10. 
for three turns. This was buffed. Ignore Invil. Arts buff. 15 stars. Yes, this is better than hers. Uh, but this is, again, this is one turn. And then, yeah, cool. Better, better OC. Uh, I mean, better normal effect. Uh, this OC sucks like straight dick. And hit count, cool, but worse. Arts cards are worse. He will just perform worse. Yeah, so completely taking out the buster part out of the equation of her changing MPs. She is still the best single target Lancer for three turn scenarios and is boosted by the fact that she is art. So there is no downtime like Buster or Quick would have. She will always be protected and you will not you will not be sweating. You're not you're not going to be worried. Like and the best part is it's just MP Gen. So she doesn't need to be like going last in a break chain. So like that's not gonna matter that much. The 10 p 10% MP gen is not gonna matter if she's spamming her MP every time that her like she almost permanently has a 60% MP gen rate plus any other from her own kit. 60% from her own kit. Now let's take the Buster version. Ignores Invul for one turn, damage to all enemy, burn 1000 for five turns to them, Buster performance. 20% ramps up. Yeah, uh, Tiamat. Very, very re reminiscent of T Tiamat. Uh, with the ramp up of Buster. With Oberon, Buster farming. And also, they start from zero. T like, literally, you bring Melison. Like, you don't you don't even change the CE. You just change characters. If you're fighting any of the Calvary class, you bring Tiamat. If you're fighting any of the Knight class besides Archers. No, no, no. Actually, Melison will do well even if she's fighting Sabres. I actually used her to farm Sabres from 0 to 100 without a black row, and she still did it as long as she was killing the second wave. That is the issue. Like, second wave is going to be, uh, if her copy isn't high enough, you're going to suffer. Like, you might not kill, and that will really screw things up for her. But usually that is fixed by putting on a black row. I have not, I don't even think I've used her with a black row and I'm still like blown away by her damage of what I can get away with. Yeah, she ramps up very well. Her damage gets very high. She has ignore invul. So you technically like even this version, if you don't want her to be like a rocket or a nuke and you want her to actually be your DPS, she can do that. Like if you, sorry, if you look here, like even without Oberon, like boosting her damage with a black rail, her damage is still better than any other AOE Buster Lancer. Like still bring her to do your thing. You just like start her out as a Buster unit. You don't start her out on arts or, or you could still start her out. Yeah, sorry, can English. Or you could still start her out with a black rail and just make it so she has black rail. Like just still start it. And you just don't use Oberon if you don't want her to like go to sleep. The materials to level, this is literally the worst. This will be the bait of your existence. You are going to be farming for so goddamn long on this. You if you plan on summoning for her at all, you need to level this. Otherwise, she is not farming for a while. You are going to have to definitely wait till Oberon. Like, she's not farming uh, until Oberon comes out to begin with. You need him maxed out first and second skill. And then you have to make sure you have enough mats to have this unlocked. I think she is extremely overtuned. I think they're starting to get to the point where, yes, we need Buster units that they can use Black Rail. And that's why we have Tiamat. That's why we have Arcuid. That's why they put. Uh, sorry. Yeah, that's why they put Rising Mud Rain into the game. They wanted to give Melison actual competition. They wanted other servants to be able to start from zero like her. And as you can see, even that is not closing the gap by that much.
unless I get super lucky, I'm not summoning for Melison on her first spin. I will be waiting till December uh, when that time is way less hectic. Uh, it's going to be after Guda Guda 5. Uh, no, sorry, Guda Guda 6. Uh, before Scotty gets her buff, before the uh, Betty Emma raid up, if I'm remembering that time correctly, uh, right before uh, Tungusta, so Taigon Wong and uh, Dobrynya, which are permanent too. I think that is probably going to be the best time to summon for Melson if you are patient enough. That will give you enough time to make sure Oberon is good, so the rest of your account is going to be good. It's going to give you time for Vich, and Vich doesn't need much because I think all her mats are like, you're able to have Vich like pre-farmed already. You're, yeah. Oberon, I think, needs Lost Belt 6 mats. Melson, there is no fucking way it is even possible for you to be like, oh yeah, my Melison is going to be maxed out on day one. No, that's not possible. You literally can't because you can't farm the bells. She's a great servant. She's a really, really good servant. I can't say anything truly bad about her. Like I say, she is a single target Lancer with two skills most of the time. But the fact is like her two skills are still better than like most other servants, three skills. That's that's that is kind of an issue. If you're if you if a servant is so good that two of their skills are the equivalent of three certain skills for other servants, you need to look at the other servants. Because they're not they don't do gotcha games don't do nerfs. They do game they get balance their game around strong servants. AKA 90 plus plus because Oberon. Alright. I will see you guys in the next one. Tomorrow is Percival and I have a far more positive opinion on Percival that is not like talking about power creep. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace. If you enjoyed this video, please drop a like, comment, sub, all that good YouTube stuff. I'm putting this at the end of the video because I'm really bad about selling out mid video. So thank you for watching.